Okay, folks, today we are going to go ahead and pull this boom and stuff off of this bed. I want to explain a couple things, too. You know, this is just an average, you know, wrecker bed like they had used for years. But the difference in the new beds, they don't use an enclosed bed like this. It's more like uh, the one I built. I'll show you here real quick. Okay, now... This is a toolbox on this side and a toolbox on the other side. Now I have these connected together just because of the tunnel on the front. But besides that, it's completely separate. And uh, it actually separates right here. It's got an outrigger and then it comes into here. And so you basically got a bed that is nothing but a uh, subframe with two boxes. One down each side. And that's the way all the new wreckers are built now. And that's the way we're going to do our rotator. Okay, so now that you understand that and my concept of why I'm not using this bed, and like I said, I may or may not end up using this tailboard. Probably not, but, you know, we're going to keep it on the, on the shelf there. Okay, these bolts, it's, of course, a two-man job, and they're nothing but half-inch bolts, so I'm going to go ahead and torch them. Uh, same way, there's another row of the bolts like that. They're up here. I can probably get to them, but... Uh, and, you know, that way I don't have to get up under and torch them. But they come up through from the bottom. And uh, I may be able to get my arm up in there and hold them. We'll see. If not, we'll torch them. Or may, they may have welded nuts on them. Uh, we're going to go ahead and get this boom pulled off here. Because uh, the bed's actually in my way. And I need to move it so I can get around the truck a little easier. And, you know, still get up here to the shop. So we're going to go ahead and get it off. And then uh, I'll show you the control valve setup and everything that's on it when we get it up out of there. All right, I'll show you more in a minute. Okay, folks, we're fixing to try to get this off here. Uh, got all the bolts out of this end underneath and the uh, rods off. The rods just run the control valves that are mounted on the bottom of this and, of course, go to the levers. There's rods that run all the way across and then short rods that runs up to the controls. So we've got it chained up there. I'm thinking that the, the winch end is probably going to be a little heavier. they got some pieces welded on it and... You sort of like lift an eye, so we're going to try to pick it like that and see how it goes. But put just a little bit of pressure on it, and I'm going to cut these bolts because uh, I can't get to the bottoms to hold them. And uh, there should be six of them. There were six in the front, but uh, unless one of you all want to hold them for me, and I don't think that's going to happen. So I'll go ahead and get them cut, and we'll get it lifted up off. Okay, folks, I think I've got it all cut loose. We're going to try to pick it up and see what happens here. bed not, might not be heavy enough to pull them bolts out so I may see if we can grab a hammer there or something make sure we can drive them out let me set you back down Okay, that's what we wanted. Now we'll pick that thing up a little bit. It looks like it's leaning that way some, but 
may have to redo the chains, but we'll pick up on it and I'll show you what it looks like. Okay, now you can see it's got grease and stack control valves. You can see these bolts right here. There's three bolts that actually go through and hold this together and there, you know, the O-rings in between it. So pretty simple setup, just a open center, you know, uh, return to center, uh, regular two-way control valves that, uh, and you can see that it was capped off on this end. That's the return line. And then uh, the, uh, let me see, I think he's got the end of the, got the end of the pressure line capped also. Now this was done by the person I got this from, so that was really good. Good, for, good that they done it anyway. And, uh, you know, pumping the tank and this thing would be ready to roll, but, uh, and I see evidence of, you see these cuts here, that tells me that somebody couldn't get this pin out. And, uh, you know, wreckers are notorious for this. There's no grease fittings for this. What had happened is, is at one time this stuck in there, and instead of being able to knock it out, especially down, you know, when it's mounted, they just took a sawzall and cut it, and cut it, and actually cut the pin off. These should line up, I can't see, but it should line up with the ends of the cylinder. But uh, cut the pin off, take it out, and then you can drive them out a lot easier. And I mean, it's a pain to do that, but I mean, sometimes you gotta do it. Looks like this is 3 8 plate, so this this will be fine. You know, all this will get taken off. These uprights, just for strength, these will get taken off. This will mount directly down to our probably half inch plate that goes on top of our slewing gear. And uh, so that's gonna work out really well. Uh, already got a hole there. That'll go in the center of the slowing gear. We'll probably line it up to where that's just about center. And that way our hoses will come back up through there. We're not going to run anything to, to be able to spin this, uh, you know, 360 degrees. We're only going to be able to go around to the side and back around to the other side. I hadn't figured out how far it's going to actually go yet, but we'll put some stops on it to keep it from going too far. Uh, but, you know, a lot of the new rotators go all the way around. We don't need to, and we're not going to. And... Uh, That'll save us from having to to mess with our hoses too much. We'll have enough length there because of the slide, and and uh, we'll have them bundled in one bundle, and you know it won't be enough twist on them to actually hurt them. And uh, as long as you put enough length in them, that's your important part. You don't want to get them tight. But we'll go ahead and uh, there's the top of the bed, and you see that's the bolts cut off, and that's the ones I took out. So be a nice fifth wheel bed or something for somebody if they wanted to redo it and set it up for that like a western style or the only bad part is is you know if you put a fifth one it it's not flat so you know it'd be kind of hard to haul anything you know if you needed to haul something but anyway but i'm going to get this set down and then i'm going to get this bed out of my way show you more okay folks that's all we're getting done for the day i know we're still in teardown mode but First of the week, I'm going to buy some. Uh, go buy the steel for the subframe. So we're going to go ahead and get started on that. I think I'm going to go with the like inch and a half by six uh, thick wall, and should be able to just get 20 foot stick and cut it, and you know get what we need. And uh, everyone around here, including myself, is uh, you know we're we're kind of got the flu bug or you know the sick from this uh, weather changing like it has been and I mean it's cold today I've got coveralls on and I think day before yesterday I was out here in short sleeves so it's rough so not feeling the best in the world but can't always let that stop you but we did get this done today and I mean I know it's not much but I'm gonna go ahead and post it for you and uh, like I said I'd prefer to do a lot of short videos than than you know real long ones and uh, that way you get more, but 
for a shorter amount of time. <laughs> but anyway, uh, we're going to get to taking, you know, taking stuff off this again. And, you know, like I said, we'll just be more tear down. And, uh, but we will get started building back up here shortly. Uh, get my cutter in and get the trolley built and uh, pick up our steel plates we need for the bottom of this and the, the other, you know, the other one for the, where the uh, slewing gear mounts onto the trolley. Now, I've got the option of going back over and cutting them pieces out from under the, uh, the track hoe that you see me take the slowing gear out of. Uh, I can do that. Uh, we may do that before it's over with. I'm going to, you know, take a look at them and see what's, you know, more feasible. So we're trying to save money on this deal. I mean, you know, a tank at auction is only $20. And, uh, you know, it, it it's more work, but to me it's worth it to, to cut stuff and grind it and fix it and just do it right. I mean, if you go through your cylinders and you're rebuilding every piece and, you know, you're checking for cracks and welding everything up, you're not going to have any problems with this stuff. I mean, I've done this for years and haven't had any trouble. You know, I built my first record when I was 22, and actually everybody told me you can't get on highway patrol rotation with a homemade wrecker. And uh, when I finished it and had the highway patrol come out and inspect, I, I had no problem whatsoever. You know, they everybody said it had to be rated by the manufacturer, and I was the manufacturer, so I rated it. And uh, it was overbuilt. You know, I was 22 years old, but it, you know, I still, you know, knew enough to, to build it right. And, uh, I, you know, I never had a problem with it and used it for years. And uh, so we're going to go ahead and we'll get this cylinder off. We're going to get these pieces off that, that they would actually welded on for the dollies, them two squares. And... Uh, I like them light brackets, uh, the way that they're made. I don't know if that's a factory thing or not right here. We'll, but we'll unbolt them and take them off, and we'll leave that open to put them back on. I kind of like the way they're made. And, uh, you know, that way we can have lights with the when we swing the boom. And uh, everything else is pretty good on this unit. I mean, it's the, the steel, it's not as wide as my 10-ton, but boom-wise, but the actual steel is heavier. It's... Uh, it, not by much, but it is built, you know, built thicker and heavier. So uh, the older ones seem to be that way. You know, they've lightened up and and uh, put more bracing here and there. But you know, they they learn more from it. And uh, you know, like I said, sometimes it's not it's not what something's built out of. You know, it's it's a lot of times how it's built. And to give you an example, uh, you know, you look at an old lattice crane in comparison to a hydraulic crane. You know, a hydraulic crane, the boom is so much heavier that it starts losing its lifting capacity from boom weight. And you take an old lattice crane that, you know, it's structurally, it might only be made out of two inch, you know, angle iron, but structurally and uh, compared to weight wise, it's actually, you know, a lot of them are stronger than, you know, a lot of the hydraulics, you know, more reach and, and uh, but that's the, the point of that. You know, everything don't have to be built super heavy, but, you know, it needs to be built right. So we will, uh, we'll get back on this and uh, hopefully I'll be feeling a little bit better tomorrow and, you know, get some more done. But uh, until then, I appreciate it. And uh, don't forget to subscribe and comment and like if you like. And uh, till next time, bye.